The aim of this video is to explain the differential diagnosis of amylogenesis imperfecta. The diagnostic methods of enamel defects are based first on clinical observation. Remember to look at all the teeth. How many teeth are affected? Only one tooth or a group of teeth or all the teeth? Are primary teeth as well as permanent teeth affected? When the tooth erupted, was the defect already present or not? Is the defect in correlation with the chronology of tooth formation and mineralization? Identify the type of enamel defect. What is the color and aspect of the enamel? Is there a loss of enamel thickness? The defect could be in hyperplasia, when the surface and thickness of enamel are preserved but if we observe a discoloration, the defect is rather an hypermineralization. Investigate the meticulous medical and familial history. Ask these type of questions. Does anyone else in the family have anything like this? Is there anything in the past medical history which might affect enamel formation? Are there associated extral symptoms or other disorders? Do a pedigree plotting. Radiographic assessment is needed to provide information on the contrast between enamel and dentine, to explore unerupted teeth or resorbing teeth. When performing a differential diagnosis, one should also be aware of. Enamel development can be perturbed by many different environmental influences. Extrinsic disorders of tooth formation, localized disorders of tooth formation and chronological disorders of tooth formation should be considered in the differential diagnosis. Any local or systemic event during the development of teeth may result in some dental anomaly. One tooth or more teeth are affected and the enamel could be reduced in quantity or in quality or both. According to the clinical appearance, we distinguish discoloration, opacity, and hypoplasia. More than 100 etiological agents, including endocrine disruptors and fluoride, have been reported to cause developmental defects of enamel. A group of teeth will show defect at different levels of the crown, depending of the stage of crown formation when the insult occurred. These type of defects are considered as chronological developmental disturbance. Fluorosis is one of the most common forms of differential diagnosis in amylogenesis imperfecta. In the mildest forms, fluorosis manifests as a defect of maturation. Clinically we see hypermineralization, ranging from tiny white flecks to confluent opacities, with areas of hyperplasia in the most severe cases. Investigation of the patient's fluoride history is necessary to confirm the diagnosis. Molar incisor hypermineralization MIH, is another common differential diagnosis of amylogenesis imperfecta. It is a condition presenting as a qualitative change in enamel, ranging from localized opacity to enamel post-eruptive breakdown, and secondary carious lesion. Teeth affected by MIH are often very sensitive to thermal or chemical stimulation. MIH has a multifactorial etiology with the duration, strength, and timing of occurrence of the etiological factors being responsible for the variable clinical characteristics of these defects. For example, endocrine disruptors may cause defects in MIH. Dentinogenesis imperfecta is a genetic disorder of dentine. All teeth are affected. It is characterized by an amber-gray to yellow or bluish discoloration of the teeth, and by relatively bulbous crowns, pulpal obliteration, and short, narrow roots. The early loss of the enamel, particularly from incisal and occlusal surfaces, exposes the soft dentine to occlusal forces that can lead to severe attrition. Periapical pathology is possible. Enamel defects have various etiologies, which may be local, environmental or genetic. Whatever is the form, the alteration of enamel is irreversible. The differential diagnosis of AI is based on the family history, pedigree plotting, 
and meticulous clinical observation as well as radiographic examination. A molecular etiology could be established by laboratory-based genetic testing. The dentist should know when to refer adequately the patient to a specialist or a geneticist, particularly if a syndromic form is suspected.